Jason Allen here from Play It Software. Today I'm going to take you through the new features in Play It Live version 1.16. So the first feature to talk about in Play It Live version 1.16 is the improved track editing navigation. So if you've ever had a long track editing session where you're inputting lots of metadata or uh, setting cue points for your tracks, if you're doing lots of tracks at once, it becomes a bit tedious, so, so I'll put some work in to try and improve that. So it's very easy to go now from the current track that you're on onto the next track or the previous track via a previous and next button. So this respects the list that you've chosen, so even if you've filtered a track list down to idents, for example, you can easily navigate through all the idents, so all the items that you've chosen in the list. The next thing to talk about is bulk track editing. So again, if you've been editing a lot of tracks at once, maybe you just want to rename the artist or you want to change the genre or the year, you'd have to do that individually for each track. Now you can select all the tracks you want to edit, click the edit button and then you can easily change the value and click OK and it will save that value for that field. A couple of new fields that you can add against tracks now. So you can add tags, which are kind of your your metadata and some people might describe them as labels. So you can add that information to your tracks. Very nice for advanced filtering. If you don't want to keep managing listed track groups, you can easily just add a tag to a track and then create a filtered track group to filter to that information. The comments field, free text field, enter whatever you want. A lot of people will be using this for this track, charted in 1973 at position number three, for example. Or you can put album information or just something interesting that the listener might, might want to hear on the air. And finally, a couple of track file analysis tools so you can now find missing tracks. So if you have moved the audio file for a particular track to another folder, you can easily reassign the audio file for that track so that Play It Live can find it again. It's quite handy if you've moved a file to another location or reorganized your track library in general. And finally, the duplicate file analysis. So if you've added a track multiple times inadvertently, you can easily find the duplicate tracks and remove them from the system. Second section is track groups. So I mentioned before about filtered track groups for tags. So you can easily create a filter track group that looks for a tag on a track and will return that track if it's found. And on the filtered track groups, there was a bit of feedback on this window. So when you were creating a filter track group, it wasn't particularly clear what tracks it was finding. So there's now a section called tracks matched by this filter so that will list the tracks as you're changing the filter so it gives you a, a lot more feedback as to to what tracks are being matched by that filter and finally some enhancements to the live playout log on the main interface so now you can select an item on the playout log and it will expand and give you more information such as the genre year intro length uh, and the comments uh, that you are entering uh, for the tracks. You can also navigate the playout log from the keyboard using the up, down, page up, page down and home buttons should give you a bit more freedom while you're navigating the log. And finally, the time since last played is calculated and displayed when you have expanded the playout log item on the main interface. This is particularly useful if you are playing idents or promos and you want to see when was that last played. So for users who aren't scheduling everything in advance, it's easy to see, oh, I played that promo half an hour ago, so I don't want to hear it again. So lots of features to get through. Let's take a look on Play It Live. So here we are on Play It Live version 1.16.
So I'll start by showing you the track editor. So we can go to manage and tracks. Here are all the tracks in my system. And I can start by easily uh, just double clicking on any of these. We'll open up the edit track window. As you can see, this looks slightly different than it has done previously. You can now uh, drop down the artist and see all artists that are in the system. So if you want to ensure that your track artists are consistent, uh, you can easily find them in this list. Same applies for genres. As you can see, my genre collection is uh, vast because it's, wow, that's an interesting one, has come out of uh, all the MP3, uh, ID3 tags. So um, these will need some tidying up, but we can easily see if these tags are already used in the system and find the ones that are untidy and fix them. So I can easily navigate through these tracks uh, just by jumping uh, through, I mean, there's 3000 on here. So if you are wanting to, to do a, a vast editing session, you can just click on these, uh, make changes. And when you click on next, it saves those changes and uh, brings up the next one. As usual, these are saved as part of the session. You need to actually apply uh, the editing changes uh, via the apply button or the OK button. If I want to filter down to only track groups uh, that are idents, for example, so these are all uh, the very nicely borrowed Cambridge 105 idents. So I can uh, double click on these here now. So as you can see, this is only one of 23 because we're only editing the items that we can see in the list. So here I can I can change my artist uh, to ident, for example, uh, click on next. If I jump back, you can see that that was changed and then change this one to ident. And as you can see, all I want to do is change the artist for all these to be ident. So if I hit save, you can see those ones were saved. I can select all of these. So I selected all these using the shift button, which will select all these items. I can click on edit. It brings up the bulk edit track editor where I can change any of these fields. I just want to change artist and change that to ident. And that will add the artist ident to each of those. So I'll show you the tag editing functionality. So if I wanted to add some tracks to a playlist, for example. So I have a playlist A and a playlist B and I know which tracks I want to put in each of those playlists. I can find a track, I can add a tag for playlist A, save this track, find another track and call this one playlist A. And as you can see from my drop down here, all my tags that I've added, including Norwegian band for AHA. And I can keep uh, going through each of these until I uh, fill in all the tags that I want. So I've added those three uh, items into each of my playlists and uh, let's, let's, let's do playlist B as well while we're here. I can easily create a track group that filters to each of those tags uh, so we can easily switch tracks in and out of playlists directly from the track. So I can jump to track groups, go to add and go to filtered track group. This is my playlist A track group. So I want my tags contains playlist A. As you can see, when I've made that change, all the tracks that have been matched by this filter have been found quickly in this list. And I'll click OK, and I can do the same again for playlist B. So there's only one track in this one, which we would have expected. So we have two filter track groups for playlist A and playlist B. Now, if I want to jump back uh, to my tracks, go back to call on me, which I added to, in fact, I can just filter it here, can I? So I can go to playlist B, click on my item, and I can change this to be playlist A, for example, and click save, and then this will jump into the playlist A category. I find this easier than managing uh, list playlists from listed track groups, especially if you're moving tracks uh, from playlist to playlist, uh, filtered track groups with tags seems like the easier option. So showing you the playout log, 
on the Play It Live main interface. You can see here all my tracks to play for the 12 o'clock hour. And if I click on an item, it will expand and give me more information. It will show me the IQ, the intro, the genre and the year. And then there's some blank space here for a comment. So if we go to Manage and Tracks and find this track. I can add some comments. So my so my genre here, uh, we or my IQ here, we can uh, we can listen to that and and choose an appropriate IQ. The comments here I can grab from from Wikipedia. Just make sure that's attributed with Wikipedia. So something for the the on air uh, announcer uh, to say, and I can edit my genre, which according to Wikipedia is reggae pop. And my IQ, I can take a listen to the end of my track and, and hear what that sounds like. So this is fairly sudden, so good indication to the on-air announcer that the track is going to end suddenly and maybe they need to, to talk immediately. So we can edit those and click on save. In fact, I'll set my intro here as well, so let's have a listen to that. Excellent, that's how quickly you should be able to set intros. I click save and click OK. This will populate my information. I've got Lily Allen Smile, uh, Sudden uh, IQ uh, intro of that length. A genre of, of reggae pop and the year is that. And as you can see, my description is slightly too big for the box, but you can just hover over that box and it will give you more information. If you click on any other item, you can. it's not just the one that's going to play next, you can expand any of these items and if you fill in the information, obviously, this will get populated. If I click on the this ident uh, for Cambridge 105, you can see that this was last played 30 minutes ago. So this is easy uh, if you don't want to replay a promo or you don't want to replay a jingle too, too often, you can easily just uh, see if the track has been played recently. This will be displayed if you've played it in the last 24 hours. And the last thing to show is the missing track file analysis and the, the duplicate track file analysis which exist under the Tools menu item. So we can take a look at uh, missing tracks. So here I've done a bit of reorganization of my uh, track audio. I've moved all the Gwen Stefani tracks into um, into a folder called Gwen Stefani. So if I scan for these, you can see that it's found all these Gwen Stefani tracks that Play It Live thinks still exists in uh, the E drive slash music slash Gwen Stefani, uh, the, the full length of, of that path. However, they've been moved and some errors may happen if it can't play those tracks. So when you do scan for missing tracks, you can see that there's a resolution column, so you can choose what to do with these. By default, it's going to do nothing, but I can choose this to go update path and click in my new path and then I can find it. So I've got a folder here called Gwen Stefani where all my tracks have moved to. So I can choose this track, which is the new one, and click on OK. And then when I click away from this, it will then go, oh, you probably want to move all the other Gwen Stefani tracks. They're also in that folder, so it will automatically pick those up. And I can easily just hit resolve. It will resolve those tracks and move them all into the correct location. So when I scan for any missing tracks, it can't find any anymore. And I can also go to duplicate track file analysis. So there's a number of tracks in the Play It Live database that I've added multiple times. So I can jump to scan for duplicate track files. It'll find a number of Natasha Bedingfield and Kaiser Chief tracks that have been added multiple times and it's as easy as remove duplicates that will remove any duplicate tracks that are referencing the same track file and those have been removed. So that's the new features in Play It Live version 1.16. I welcome your feedback in the comments below and you can download this from playitsoftware.com forward slash live. I've been Jason Allen from Play It Software.